Hello, my name is John Bernard. I'm the Superintendent of Schools in North Reading, and I'd like to welcome you to this edition of Inside NRPS. Our guest today is Ms. Sharon Kelleher, the new director of the Flint Memorial Library. Sharon, welcome to our show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's a privilege to be here. I'd like to start by giving you an opportunity to, in a sense, introduce yourself to the community. So if you'd like to just kind of tell us a little bit more about you and your background and what brings you to North Reading. That would be great. First, I want to say congratulations to you Thank also you. becoming superintendent. Thank you. Um, I raised my children in this town, as you know, and one of my sons had the opportunity of having you as a principal. So I am so glad, and North Reading is so fortunate to have you. Thank you. You're um, I am also thrilled to be back in North Reading. Um, I have been surrounded by, by books my whole life. It happens to be my passion. Um, so when I graduated from college, Boston University, a few years ago, um, I started working for McGraw-Hill and Random House and really, really enjoyed working with books. And then I had my two children and had the opportunity to have a business at home, um, which I was very fortunate. I could meet the kids off the bus and work at home, which was mm. really, really a dream for me. I was really blessed. Um, then come, come a time a few years ago where I knew it was time for me to go back to work and didn't quite know what I was going to do. Um, one of my friends, one of my good friends said to me, well, what's your passion? Find your passion. And I knew right away that I had to be surrounded or working with books and knowledge again. So I thought, well, I could work in a library. I could work at a bookstore. What should I do? And um, I was lucky enough to get a job at the Bill Ricca Library working. And as soon as I started working there, I knew I had found what I wanted to do. You know. Um, the, the mission of the public library is my absolute passion. Mm. Um, you know, having free access for everyone. Everyone in the community should be able to access just the same the same information. So I knew I wanted to work in a public library. Um, and then because I love education, I decided, well, let me go back to school. And so there I was in my 40s, um, going back to school to get my master's degree, raising two children and working. And I was able to do that because I just loved it so much. And started working full-time in Bill Ricca, and this job opened. I was so grateful. Um, Helena Minton was a fantastic director. She did yes. a lot of wonderful things, and she was able to retire, and I thought, this is a great opportunity to be able to be a director and you know, make my mark on something and be in the town that I love so much. So here I, here I am today. <laughs> That's great. And how long did you work in Bill Ricca? Uh, six years. Nice. Started there part-time and just, you know, just kind of worked my way, mm -hmm. worked my way into uh, other positions. And now you've been on the job in North Reading for a few months. I have. Maybe you could tell us about your early impressions of the Flint Memorial Library. Oh, well, I'll, needless to say, I love the Flint Memorial Library. The, the building itself is gorgeous, and I think anyone who drives by or whoever is in it would, yes. would know that. It's, it's just beautiful. Yeah. Yes, it's beautiful. Um, the library itself has so many wonderful things that it offers besides having you know the beautiful children's room, um, the, all, all the different areas and um, all the information that it has, it, 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 there are so many things that it offers that I just think people don't know about it. I think that finding, for people to be able to find the library and to go in and see mm -hmm. what it offers, that's, that's the biggest challenge because once they're there, they can see all of the amazing things, but um, getting the word out, spreading the word, marketing the library, I think is the most important thing because the library already has fantastic things, people just don't know about it. Well, I see you brought a few props I with did, you today. I Maybe did, I did. This is a good opportunity <laughs> I to did, I did. Out. Well, I was trying to hide my leg, but I will admit that since I had surgery, I was one of the people who started binge watching. So I started, <laughs> I was staying home a lot with my cast on, and I don't think people realize that, you know, Breaking Bad, the newest you know, series that Joel just finished on TV, Downton Abbey, which people are mm, obsessed about. Yes. The library has all of those shows. If you don't want to pay or cannot afford to pay for Netflix, don't. The library has access mm. to all of the newest materials. When a new movie comes out on DVD, we have it that day. We have it that day. We're able to get it. Sometimes we have it before that day, and we put it out right when it's released. So we have access to so many things like that. So is our library a member of a larger association, a collaborative of libraries? Yes. Could you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely, yes. We are part of the Merrimack Valley Library Consortium, mm -hmm. and it's made up of 36 libraries. And we all share materials. We all share information and databases and resources. And it's so wonderful because we are a small town. We do have a limited budget. but. Anything you want, anything you can ask for. If we don't have it, we can get it for you within days. And that's it typically is just a couple of days or so? For, typically, is, it, hmm. it is truly a couple of days. Every, every day the requests go out and they have this amazing you know, system. I don't know what algorithm it uses, but it yeah, finds, it finds right, what you're right. looking for. And hmm. within a couple of days, we can get whatever you need. Great. It is, and it's, it's, it's a great resource for people. 
And I don't even think some people, you know, realize that we can do that. And there's an economic benefit to towns who are able to partner with other communities to share resources. Abs and, absolutely, ooh, absolutely. Nice. We all help each other. We all see if there's something that's very popular. You mm -hmm. know, we try to buy things, and we do. There's a lot of meetings and a lot of conscious effort that goes into making sure that we can all help each other and work together. And, and what about other programs that you might want to highlight? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bring up my last prop. Um, something like Consumer Reports. You would mm -hmm. assume you'd find that in the library, but we just started um, December 1st that you can access Consumer Reports online. This is the perfect time of year before you go holiday shopping. You can check the ratings, you can check right. reviews, and all you need is a library card and you can access it from home and it's free. So the, the library has so many things that it offers mm. and when people think it's just about books, there are books there, and, and I hope there are books that are always there, but the library offers so much more, and you just have to log on to our website or just, just walk in and see. And that web address is? Oh, very good, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> FlintMemorialLibrary.org. FlintMemorialLibrary.org. Oh, yeah. So, Sharon, in this, in this age of, um, of, say, digital literacy, and you know, people are on their Nook or on their Kindle or iPad and such, how, how is it that you find the library... Uh, competing with that kind of a digital demand and the balance of, say, print media is, do you see, has library patronage fallen off or is it at a different level or how, how do you see that? I do see, um, we are all in this day and age, we're all digital <clears throat> learners, either the kids, the teens who think nothing of, they have their iPads, they have their laptops, they have their, their phones. smartphones, yeah, exactly. Sure. So that has changed because kids have more access. Older adults also, they they have to go online for things. You can't even get your tax forms sent to you. Now, mm. they, you know, they don't even print them anymore, so you have to go online to do that. You have to go online for the, for the registry. So many things. It's a digital world, and we provide access to that. We provide free access to that, and believe it or not, not every single resident has their sure. own computer, yeah. and I don't yeah. think people realize that, but mm -hmm. we provide access to all of that. Google is amazing. I Google Every, you know, all, all day I Google yep. things. However, if you want accurate, reliable information, we know how to get that. We mm. know where that is, and that's free as well. So we are absolutely keeping up with the times. We're actually more vital than ever because people can come to us, mm. access what they need to, and know that they're getting the right information. And all of that is, is free. And for as far as recreational reading, I mean, I, I'm a former English teacher, an avid reader. Um, there's still there's still something about having a book in your hand. I, I still find that. I mean, yes. I know. I'm not all that old yet, right. but as I'm aging, but you know, certainly working around young people every day, um, I know that that is such a, a part of their life. But um, there's still something about about the book in your hand, I think, and, and, yeah. and just that that kind of traditional sense. Do you still find that there is a, a, a fairly good sized market for that in the library? There absolutely That's is. That's good to hear. And people yeah. get Kindles. I have a Kindle Fire, mm -hmm. but I would much rather hold a book. And it's yeah. not because I'm trying not to give in, but yes, right. even people who have Kindles, or some people actually read on their smartphones, mm -hmm. but yes, the, the tangible holding of a book, there's just something something psychological about that, being right. in bed there or is. being on the yeah. beach or something. So yes, we find that it has dropped, but you know our use of e-readers and being able to access closes the gap. It, exactly, it does. Yeah. It does yeah. close the gap. And, and I know for me, sometimes I, there's still I have a personal library, and there are just some books I want in that yes. library, and you know whether it's uh, to go back to or to share or yes. or, or just to um, just to have as part of the home. You know, I, I think I'm glad to hear that there there is still you know, a fairly good sized calling for that. There 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 definitely is, and mm. if I can just lead to the next thing I just want to sure. talk about with the library is our over drive. So the holidays, again, lots of people are going to get gifts, Kindles and Nooks, and, mm -hmm. and there are two parts to that. First, you need to learn how to use them, and they are very, very easy to use once you've set it up, but they can be confusing to people, and we want you to know that you can come to the library and we'll help you. Um, we'll give you instructions. If we can work one-on-one -on -one with you, we will, but we'll always try to get you so that you can use and enjoy your e-reader. That's great. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. and then we have something called Overdrive, which is through the Merrimack Valley Library Consortium, access to thousands and thousands of e-books free, so you don't have to go out and, you know, books can be expensive hmm. if you download them yeah. from Amazon. Yeah, they can be. Yep, yeah. so we have that's access great. to that as well. Hmm. That's a nice service for people. Mm -hmm. Well, in in the way of um, in the way of innovations and, and new ideas and kind of the changing the changing uh, makeup of a library, I know that the library recently unveiled its browsing cafe. Yes, we maybe did. you'd like to talk a little bit about that and maybe any other innovative ideas you foresee in the future. Sure, sure. So our browsing cafe, when you walk in, you would see that it is it is just a, a separate area, um, made up of 
really comfortable leather chairs, really nice lighting. It's just a comfortable area, lots of outlets so that you can plug in all your devices. Mm. Uh, we have a Keurig station so you can have coffee, tea, or hot cocoa. And um, The purpose of the Browsing Cafe, it's really a change in the way people think more than just a small area because mm -hmm. people are using libraries differently than they did before. It's more yes. of a gathering space or a community area. People use it every day. They come in, people who work out of their home, they bring their laptop there because mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to be motivated when you're sitting at home. So you come in and you're in this beautiful environment. You're welcomed there. You don't have to be quiet. There's no more shushing in the library, yeah, which yeah. is nice. So you get your cup of coffee and you sit in a really comfortable chair and you can do work. And, and where is that located? It's right on the first, right, right in the, the main first, level? right in the okay. main level. Yep. Okay. So as you walk in, it's it's to the left. And it's a beautiful area, and mm. we're working. Pretty much area to area, we're trying to make everything more inviting, more friendly. We have to keep up with the Starbucks kind of mentality, exactly. the, the you know, cafe style, yeah. Definitely. I mean, people people are using libraries differently. differently. People are mm. people are working differently, and we're providing the space to do that. We want people to come in. We want people to feel welcome. And you can sit there, and you don't have to buy coffee, and you can do your work there all day. Mm. And that's that's one of the things that's you know changing in the library and, and how how did that come about how did that browsing cafe come about yeah um if you want to remain relevant you have to evolve mm -hmm. and people say well we don't need libraries anymore because no, people aren't using books and we know that's that's we know that's not true however people do have the idea that well if i'm not taking out a book or i'm not studying i shouldn't mm. come to the library so we wanted to make the library as a destination mm -hmm. um, you're out doing your mm. errands and you do some things and you also stop by the library you pick up a movie for the night or a magazine or a book or you just sit there you sit right. there and you just relax a comfortable place just a comfortable there. place where you don't have to take out your wallet, hmm. right? <laughs> Unless yeah. you want coffee. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah and so, how was that funded? How was the Browsing Cafe funded? Uh, well, we were lucky enough. Some of it was paid from state aid, which we do get from um, the state. And also there were some private donations. I thought I read in the paper some yes, private donations. Yes, there are some nice. families who just say, my parents loved the library yeah. so much, we want to give back. So we were very, very fortunate that's to get great. some private donations. Nice. Yes. That's great. Well, I, I have seen it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think for anyone who hasn't, it's really a, it's a nice treat. It, it, it really is, I think, uh, thrusting the library into into the 21st century in yes. a way that, that maybe we hadn't traditionally been used to. We all Absolutely. probably at one time or other were shushed by the library. Exactly. You know? and it's, <laughs> it's nice to hear that it's, it's a much more kind of a, a recreational, inviting kind of a place where you could just kind of go. And, and, and like you said, you're not distracted maybe by some of the things that would be at home or, right. or such. Are there any other ideas that you have or, or might foresee in the short term in the near in the near future or the or the, yeah. or the or the distant future that you think would um, would maybe be similar in terms of the the um, kind of the whole marketability of the library are there other things you might want to talk about yeah there are um, a of, lots and lots of things I want to talk about but one of the things you know my goal is truly I keep saying it over and over is to get people into the library because once you see it and you see what we mm -hmm. offer, you'll want to come back. And one of the programs that I'm going to implement or we're working on implementing is called, we're calling it the 15 and 15 challenge because it's we're going into 2015. Um, and in the past, North Reading had North Reading Reads, which yes. was a wonderful program for many years where you know, people read the same book mm -hmm. and there were some programs that are activities. That. And it's been really nice. It's <clears> been <throat> wonderful, but we thought let's, let's change it up a bit. So the 15 and 15 challenge is something where we're going to challenge uh, residents to read 15 books in a year. And it can be reading anything you want. We don't want to tell you what to read. We, want you, we just want you to enjoy reading. Hmm. You can listen. You can do it by audiobook. It doesn't have to be looked at. You can, you can hear the books. Um, and the idea is, just like I said, just to get people reading. And we're going to have events throughout the year where we're going to have raffles and people coming in and talking about the books and it's just an idea for you take time stop what you're doing and take time for yourself and read so nice yeah there's going to be prizes and some different events that will be wonderful so people will be hearing more about the 15 and 15 challenge soon but that's great yeah that's, that sounds like fun the north reading reads program i know was um was something that the schools had participated in in the past and it yes. was fun i i had i had taken part and was yes. actually held a, a discussion group um, with some students at the high school and um, do you, can you talk maybe about any, anything that you see in the future? And I know you're, you haven't been on the job very long like I have, right. and there's a lot yes. of things being thrown at, probably at both of us. Yes. That, uh, but, but I think we both uh, are similar in that we're eager to, to hit the ground running and yes. to do some good work. And the, the, the school department has always enjoyed a very nice relationship with the Flint Memorial Library. As you said, Helena Minton was a, was a wonderful person, did yeah. a nice job. And um, I have every expectation that you know our having known each other prior to yes. to these new roles um, is is something that's going to serve serve everyone well. Do you do you have any thoughts about how you might want to see the library, the public library, and schools integrate? And any mm -hmm. thoughts about 
programs that might be to the benefit of students? Yeah, um, there's lots of ways students, we always want to have students involved and students, use, kids are so busy, you know, they just, they're so pressed for time, mm -hmm. but we would love to have students involved in things we do. We have clubs, Lego club, math club, things that we'd like to start doing um, that we would love to have kids in the high school and middle school help us, help us to run mm. them. We were thinking of doing a chess club. How cool would that be if you know, kids who like chess can get together and, and do something? So we're trying to make it so that kids can come to the library and help us. Uh, again, staffing is always an issue. We, wish, we all wish we had more staff and we could do more wonderful mm -hmm. things, but, but we don't, so we work with what we have. With but what have. but yeah. if we could ask, actually you know, meet with kids and ask them, you know, what, what are you interested in? Mm -hmm. What would you be willing to help with? Um, I would love to have teenagers who have no fear or intimidation about you know, devices come in and work with seniors. Help them set up their e-readers. It's definitely them set a up generational thing, boy, oh, isn't it? it Young really people is. today just know so much. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and for those that, um, that are on the other end, so to speak, who don't, yeah, yes. it can be quite intimidating. It really can. Yeah. So if we can merge those together. It's a nice I, way to kind of bring the two groups together, too. Absolutely. Yeah, nice. Absolutely. You mentioned the chess club. I, where I live and come, come to school um, every day, I drive by the Flint Library in Middleton, mm -hmm. and they have a marquee outside, and they have, they have a chess club. I think it's oh. meeting tomorrow night, actually. Okay. I, I see that. <laughs> Uh, on the on the on the uh, on the marquee out in front of the library, so it's interesting. Uh, we have a chess club yes. at, that runs at our high school, mm -hmm. and I know that it's pretty popular. Yes. So that that sounds like it could be a nice idea. I think so. And if we can get yeah. kids to help us run it, think we can do more sure. and more programs. Well, there's community service opportunities yes. for students, so it could be a, could be a nice partnership. Absolutely. Um, so we've talked a lot about new programs mm -hmm. and ideas and things already in place, things to come. Do you, do you have a sense yet, um, Sharon, about any of the, maybe the challenges that you're facing or that the library itself is facing under your leadership? Uh, yes, actually, because the population of North Reading, um, as by the Department of Revenue, actually went over 15,000 this year, not by much, but it has actually reached over 15,000 mm -hmm. residents, we now have a uh, mandate to be open more hours, and we have a three-year grace period to do that. We're in our first year. And we're going to have to be open more hours, which will mean more staffing. So we are going to have to find really clever ways, <laughs> clever ways to mm. be open and get the funding to do that because we're, you know, we're all working on the same pot of money. Right. Um, but we. So there's a there's a mandate or a formula, so to speak, yes. that exists, and in order for the town to receive funding for its library, it must yes. be open a certain number of hours, staffed by a certain number of people. Exactly, yes. What, what, is the, what is the number from where we are now to what it must be at the end of the it, next two years? Yeah, um, we have to open the library. The, the mandate is for it to be fi five more hours, so it would have to be open 50 hours per week. Okay. And I would love to have it open even four additional hours from that because right now the the, the hours are staggered, and that was because, again, of, of budgeting. So mm -hmm. on a Monday, the library doesn't open till 1. On a Tuesday, it opens at 10. And that can be confusing for residents. Mm. And I would love to have it so we had consistent hours, just like any other business. So, so people, people would know Monday exa through Friday yes. it opens at 10 a.m. or something exactly. like that. So okay. that's, that's, that's the ultimate goal. That's what mm -hmm. we're working towards. And if we have to do that in steps, that's okay, too. But mm. um, the more consistent you can be open, the more you can help people. Because mm. we, we are sometimes at the library and we pe hear people trying to open the door. And I'm sure it's frustrating. So our goal is to be able to be open more hours, mm. more consistent hours. So I see that as a challenge or an opportunity. I like to say opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the other thing is, is just getting, getting the word out. My, one of the goals that I set for myself is to get out in the community and you know, be a part of the, the Rotary Club and mm -hmm. the Chamber of Commerce and just, just let people know, let people know what's happening at mm -hmm. the library. You know, like us on Facebook and, and just, you know, just get on our mailing list and see. You know, we have authors come. We had an author, Dana Owens, a couple of weeks ago and he was an MDC police officer. He had lived in North Reading and he had been shot in the head on a robbery heist and he came in and talked about it. it was fascinating mm. just fascinating and I just want to get the word out there that we have some really great programs sure. so I, I see that as, as one of my one of my challenges mm -hmm. what what role does the um, does the friends of the library play um, in terms of supporting you and, and programming at the at the Flint library yes oh they will be so happy if I can promote this because <laughs> oh good <laughs> yes truly truly they are invaluable they do what we cannot afford to do. They, they are all volunteers, and they are a very small group of volunteers. Mm -hmm. We wish we could recruit more people, um, but they do everything. They, they plan programs. When we have a program, they literally talk about small town. They, you know, they bake the snacks and bring them in, and they make sure the person feels welcome. They fundraise by doing the book sales, by doing the cookie walk, and that is so when we have programs for kids, we can afford the supplies and mm -hmm. we can afford things. So um, they help us do all the things that we 
would not be able to do with, with our budget. Sure. And I would love to say to someone, if you want to help them volunteer, don't feel like it's a lot of hours. You can, if there's something you really love, if you love to bake, that would be a huge help. If mm -hmm. you want to be part of any, any of it, if you can give an hour or two, we would love to have you be a friend of the library because it's a, it's a great community, a community feeling. And how does, how does someone become a friend of the, the library? library? Yep. Um, to be a friend of the library, you just fill, fill out a form, obviously, and there's different, so there's the volunteers and there's also being a friend of the library. So you would pay, I think it's 10, maybe $10 a family, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure, um, but you would pay to join and then you get member, you know, get benefits of being, being a friend, mm -hmm. which you're, you know, you know you're helping the library. And right. then there's just saying you'll be willing to volunteer as part of the friends. And whenever we're trying to do something, be willing to come in mm -hmm. and you know, help with that, and it, it's, it, it helps us enormously. And how many people do you think now are, are active members of the Friends of the Library? Um, I, I couldn't actually give you a number. We have a lot of membership families in town, mm -hmm. which is wonderful, but as far as the core group of people who do everything, I'd say probably like 10 people. Yeah, not, not a very large no, number, so you're no. definitely looking for volunteers. Definitely, because I don't yeah. want them to get tired. So. And it's not just <laughs> about the financial contribution, not which is all. really not an awfully lot right. to, you know, of someone if, they're, if they have the means to do so, but it's more about playing an active role in supporting programs that the library has. Yes, mm -hmm. I see. yes. And one of the things that they fund, which is very important, are the museum passes. Ah. And that's, do we have time to talk about sure, that? Sure, I'd love to yeah, talk about that, yeah. that we have, because of the friends funding them, we have museum passes that we offer for families. Um, the Museum of Science, the aquarium, which is very, very expensive to take a family mm -hmm. now. We have discount passes. Um, we have them to the different zoos. We have them to the different discovery museums. I am trying to make it so that this summer um, we will have discount passes for the Lowell Spinners. Oh. It makes it so the families can take Great. their kids and it's half price and that makes a big difference. Sure. Um, there's something called the Maker, I think it's called the Maker Mill, which is just opening in North Andover. It's a creative space where families can go and have this open f forum where they can do use technology and build things with 3D printers and everything mm -hmm. and they're giving us some free passes. So all you have to do is have a library card mm. and you are able to take advantage of those and they really help people. They save people a lot of money so families can do things. And that's all funded by the friends as well. Great. Well, we've talked a lot about big picture items. Are there any, we're taping this show in mid-December. Mm -hmm. um, are there any upcoming events that you might want to announce to the public that are, that, that are uh, noteworthy and they want to get on their calendar, so to speak? Um, I would say keep your eye out for the 15 and 15 challenge. My goal or our goal at the library is to have a kickoff on the 15th, January 15th. A little corny, but it'll keep yeah, people to remember. Great, yeah. um, and we're just finalizing the details of that. Okay. So, you know, people, it would be a, a year. You can have a whole year to be a part of it, and you can read easily read 15 things in a year. And if you don't, that's okay. It's, it's, not, about, it's not about that. It's about just being a part of something sure. and enjoying and finding something that you can you know, do for yourself. And so that's open to the, the entire to community, people adults. of all ages, adults. It's, it's open okay. to adults because children, we have a lot of programs, that the schools have reading programs, mm -hmm. so this is actually um, for adults only, something okay. finally adults get to do Great. and enjoy themselves. Yes. Sounds, sounds like a lot of fun, a nice idea. Yes, thank you. Well, Sharon, I think having known you as I have for a number of years and um, um, having known Helena Minton when she was director, and, you yeah. know, there were some big shoes to fill, but I, I know that you have done and will continue to do a very nice job to the benefit of the library. It's such a, such a wonderful institution in a, for a town, and, um, and we have such a, such a great resource just around the corner from here that um, yeah. it's, really, it's really nice to have you. I want to officially congratulate you and welcome you, you in your new role, and um, I look forward to our continued work together, schools and, and the library, uh, to, to, to the benefit of everyone. It's, it's just a, it's a wonderful opportunity, and I'm looking forward to working with you. So. Same here. It's a privilege and congratulations to you. Thank you. you as thank well. you. Thank you very much. Thank and I you. want to thank everyone for for watching our show. We um, we, we do anticipate uh, future uh, inside NRPS segments, so you can stay tuned on your local cable to uh, to those shows coming in the future. Thank you. Mm -hmm.